Welcome back. This is the 18th episode in creating a third person controller for Godot. If this is your first time seeing this, check that link down in the description for the entire playlist if you want to follow from the beginning. Today, we are going to continue setting up our rigged character. Last episode, we finished creating the animation tree, and now it's time to link that with our state machine. Fortunately, all the work we've done before this is going to make it relatively easy. Quick favor before we go, hit the like and subscribe if you find this helpful. Want the whole course right away? Support me on Patreon or join as a channel member for instant access. If subscriptions aren't your thing, grab the full course on Udemy and own it forever. Links in the description, let's get coding. I'm starting to set up those animation state changes via code in our state machine. Obviously, we deleted the mesh, the character's not in here, but we've got this character node now, so we can drop this in. Uh, let's reset the transforms on that, bring him in here. Now, I don't really feel like moving the character. I'd much rather have the character model 0000, zero, zero, zero right? We don't want to put any transforms on this model as long as we can avoid it. Don't Also, don't forget, before we go any further, to set the animation tree in the character model to the animation tree in the scene, right? I use exports a lot, apparently they're a little bit quicker, but uh, they're also really easy to understand from a visual standpoint. And if the node path ever changes, it, it gets updated automatically. So uh, they're really handy in that respect. I think I might've mentioned that earlier in the course. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just raise the collision shape. Okay, so I'm gonna just go into the side view here just zoom in a bit. We can reduce the size of this again, because that was really big. Click on the collision shape and just raise it up so that it's, uh, the right height. You could also just look at uh, its size. It's two meters tall. So uh, we just raise it by one and it would be perfectly on the ground. Um, the character looks pretty good. What you do want to do is just make sure that the collision shape is bigger than any of the movements that the character can do to prevent clipping into the world. So I think that's okay. I'm going to leave it. If I notice any clipping, I'll just make it bigger if I need to. Uh, in terms of height, I think it's fine to have a little bit on the top. You could probably reduce it, but it's going to mess with the ground and I don't really feel like addressing that. So we'll just leave it as is for now. And if we notice any issues, we'll just take care of them later. Okay, so we've got a character and we probably want to, do we want editable children? No, I think it's fine to leave it like that. But what we do want is an ability to emit a signal to that character model, which means we're going to need to set up some signals and we're going to set them up in the motion script. So we've got our velocity updated signal, but we are going to create a signal and we'll have it match pretty closely this state machine state changed. Uh, so we go back to motion and we might just call it animation just so we know um, animation state changed animation state changed and it's going to have a state which is a string so that is what we need and basically we are going to want to connect that uh, we're going to do it here in this state machine here because it's just a little bit easier um, to do it here so what we can do is create an export because we need a way to reference this character model right um, you could also do this with a singleton but I think it's just easier for something small like this to create it here. The state machine needs a character model. We might just call this a character model and it's going to be of type character model, right? And so we can set that now in the inspector. So if we click that, we can choose character model because it's the only thing there. And then we can create a ready function here. And in the ready function, we just need to connect all the states signals to the character model, right? So we can go for child, and then we can also type child as being a motion because all of these uh, states inherit motion. Uh, we can say in get children, and then we can write child dot animation state changed dot connect, and we can go character model dot on state machine state changed. This should probably be called animation state changed to line up more correctly with the name of the signal. It's always good practice. It makes it a little bit easier to read. So I'm going to change that function name to on state machine animation state change. So it's very clear what's happening here. Okay. So now what that will do is every single one of the children of the state machine will get that particular signal connected to it. Right. But 
what we're running into here is that the state machine is a class that is it's inheriting and it already has something happening in the ready function. Now, the way that it works in Godot is that this particular script, its ready function gets called first and it's overriding that function. So we need to make sure that the rest of the function happens, right? So there's a special way of doing this. What we type is return super dot underscore ready, right? And that'll make sure that the rest of the ready function gets called, which is really important because if we want the state machine to create a state map and actually initialize, we need this ready function to be called. So really important that you remember to put that at the end. If you're having problems, make sure you come back and check that. Okay, now we need to actually emit the signal. So if we go to idle, in the anti function where we were printing out everything, we can actually just say animation state change dot emit and we can just write in there what we want to write and so what it might help if is if you look at the if you go character model click on the animation tree click on the animation tree here just raise that up a bit when we go back to the player we can actually make that editable and we can just click the animation tree so we can see it below and then we can just go to each individual script and so what you need to do is just make sure that these particular transition requests match what you write in the signal emission here. So we're going into idle, we want to emit idle. Okay, and I'm actually gonna take a copy of this before I go further, so I can just paste into the rest of them, otherwise it's a lot of typing. Um, and so we just go for that. Now we go to run. We enter run, we want to change the animation to run. We come to aim. Aim is a little bit different because obviously uh, when we're aiming, uh, we're kind of doing the same thing as walking or uh, this one spe specifically aim idle. So we really just need to enter idle. But for aim walk, we should go to the walk state just for a little bit of extra flavor, right? Um, because we are moving a lot slower when we're in this state, right? Uh, we are moving at a slower speed, so it makes sense to be in the walking animation. Okay, uh, moving on, we go to sprint, right? Obviously, sprint. Pretty straightforward. Jump. Uh, this one, uh, we're going to work on this later on, but for now, let's just put jump, right? And then same for fall. If you're already in the state, the animation, transition here. If you put a transition request for an animation you're already in, nothing happens. So we actually do want that. There are instances where you will just walk off the edge and you want your character to do something. We only have the one animation for that, but obviously if you wanted to put in the work, you could go and find more precise animations for when you're falling. Perhaps when the character's looking down, the arms and legs will be doing something different to when you're jumping up. It's entirely up to you. You're in control here. So for fall, I'm just going to have a go to the jump. And for the sprint, I'm going to have it go to the jump as well. So all of these are the same. Jump, you could even have like a separate animation for these, but I don't. And same for sprint fall, we go to jump. Okay, so making sure that we've got the character model chosen in the state machine and that we're emitting a signal and that we have this receiving it and doing a transition request. And when we click the character model, we have an animation tree selected. Uh, everything should go together. And fingers crossed it does. Uh, the camera is something that we need to fix. So just looking down here. Uh, so if I go to like the side view, obviously the camera is way too low. So we do need to change that because it's just sitting at a state that doesn't make any sense. Um, we can raise that up probably to like 1.5. I think that looks okay. Let's have a look at the cinematic preview. Now, personally, now you got to remember that the, the position here, 0.5 and 1.5, you've got to go spring length of one, right? For the edge spring length. So that's actually like way over here. And then the rear spring length is 1.5. So that is accurate how it's going to look. I, I do think we want to move into 0.5 on the X. Just so we're a little bit closer because obviously this character is a lot slimmer than that um, capsule. And this could be one, I think that looks a lot better. 
uh, could potentially be a little bit taller. So we want it sort of around waist height. It's really up to you. Might change mine to 1.6. Okay, so just remember those numbers for the edge spring length. We probably, like I said, we want to bring that to 0.5. And for the rear, uh, what did I say? One. So the rear, one. So just remember with the camera, we're not setting those programmatically. We are setting the rear and edge spring length for the aim. Those are going to need to change, right? I think point, uh, let's, let's, let's say point three, point three, and I, I think point three for both, right? Aim speed is fine. FOV is fine. Um, sprint FOV is a hundred sprint tween speed point five. Okay. So that looks a lot better. Now let's run the game and see how our code has worked out. Okay. How good is that? Okay. So we're running forward and even when we run forward and we rotate, it looks good. Now, the one thing you might notice is the left and right, obviously need to be addressed because right now we're still running forward no matter what, but everything else looks right. So if you aim, we're walking. If we jump, we go to the jump. Uh, if we sprint, we are sprinting. So now we just need to get the rotation down and we can do that in the next episode. So I'll see you guys there. Uh, we're cracking along nice. I feel really good about this. But that is all for this week. Now that we've got our character controller linked up next week, we're going to fix up our character's rotation. If you're finding this series helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to get access to every single episode, you can become a channel member or you can join on the Patreon. And if you don't want to pay a monthly fee, but you want to get access to the course outright, you can buy it over on Udemy. I'll see you guys next time.